Hi good people, Titus here for another Unreal Engine tutorial and in this video I'll show you how to quickly light any scene like a pro. We'll be covering the Unreal Engine Environmental Light Mixer Toolkit which makes lighting any level quick and painless. Alright let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright to demonstrate this toolkit uh, I'm going to be working in a pre-constructed scene. This is the uh, uh, the Gladiator Arena environment, so you can download this off the marketplace, or you can use any scene. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, steps are still the same. Uh, I'm in unlit mode now, so if I go to lit mode, you'll notice it's very dark, with the exception of some of these uh, point lights that they have in the scene. Um, so what we can do starting off is go to the Window tab, look for the Environmental Light Mixer, not to be confused with the Light Mixer. I don't know why they named them the same, but... Uh, if you click on that, you should then be able to dock it in your uh, content browser. And now we can drag this up a bit. And it's just a matter of just clicking the buttons at the top to quickly add a skylight, an atmospheric light, a sky atmosphere, the volumetric cloud, and the height fog. Uh, some of these are optional, but the majority of the time you're going to be adding all of them and just uh, adjusting their parameters. So we can just click all those. And then just like that, you have a lit scene now. Um, starting off, I think we're going to be going over the directional light because I think that's probably um, the most important aspect. Uh, if you go to your outliner, you can find the directional light and just click on it so it's highlighted. You can then click into your, your Pi window, uh, and if you press Control-Alt-L, it'll bring up this little widget, which maybe I can drag this down so you can see a little better. There we go. And this little widget is the direction of the sun, uh, or your main light source, which in this case happens to be the sun. Um, so you can rotate it around the world, uh, you can move it you know, higher, um, in the skylight or you can bring it down to kind of get a dusk or a night effect. So getting a correct placement is very important and you should spend a little bit of time uh, getting that right where you want it. So I think for me, I'm maybe going to go right there and that lights the Coliseum pretty bright. Now if we bring up the uh, environmental light mixer a little bit higher here and then I'm going to place the camera we'll start right here uh, the light mixer is going to show you properties for each of the uh, the components here of our directional light skylight the atmosphere and volumetric clouds and our exponential height fog uh, starting off with the directional light you can increase or decrease the intensity make things basically brighter or darker pretty straightforward. Uh, you can also adjust the light color hue so you can make things you know cooler with a, a bluish tone or you can brighten them or make them warmer with a uh, you know like your reds and your orange depending on the, the type of mood you're trying to set here. Um, going over into the height fog really quick and we'll drop down. Uh, we can enable the volumetric fog checkbox here and then you can start to get your god rays if that's what you're looking for in your scene. Uh, if you wanted to increase that effect, uh, you can increase the fog density. So we do something like a 0.5, and you'll notice it's very thick. Uh, but what you can do is increase the height fall off, and then you can kind of get a. Um, well, this is still probably a little bit too intense, but you can see it's uh, a little bit better in there. You try maybe a 0.3 and that's probably a little bit better and the volumetric uh, fog takes care of a lot of the uh, the effects there if you wanted to manually uh, adjust uh, the fog values you can disable uh, volumetric fog and for the in scattering and the uh, directional in scattering lighting you can actually uh, set a color like that and then do the directional in scattering as well and then you can kind of get some uh, manual effects here it's a little bit harder and it takes a little bit uh, 
more work to do, which is why I usually let the, uh, the volumetric fog take care of that for me. You'll notice too, when you, if you do play with these values, um, if you enable the volumetric fog, it's gonna overwrite that. So um, basically it's, it's kind of one or the other. So we'll go ahead and flip those back to black. And then for now, I am going to disable the volumetric fog and reset my density uh, for the fog completely. Going back up here, we can look at our skylight settings. Uh, you can adjust the intensity, and that's gonna be the bounce lighting uh, from the clouds. So you can really darken or brighten up the scene very easily, but you can also adjust the color uh, of the shadows um, with this as well. So depending on if you're trying to maybe make the scene a little bit more warmer, yeah, you can go for something like that. Probably a bit too intense, maybe bring it back a bit. Or choose a color and then just play with the intensity through here as well. Or if you're looking to make it a little bit cooler, maybe choose a blue. And then you can mess with the intensity. Kind of get that, that mood just right, whatever you're looking for. Set that back. And then the, uh, the sky atmosphere. Uh, the ground albedo doesn't really do much, or at least I haven't noticed any real changes for that. Uh, where the, uh, the changes, the, the real changes you can make are going to be in the, uh, the Rayleigh scattering here. Um, the color you pick, um, the closer, I guess, the lower the value, the closer to that actual color. As you increase the color, or I'm sorry, if you increase the value or the scale, it's going to go to the opposite side of the color wheel. So if we move this up, it's going to go kind of like the yellows and the oranges. And you can kind of move that around there. And then kind of flip this around. So if you're looking for something like that, you can definitely adjust your scene appropriately. Although I happen to like the blues a little bit more, so I think I'll bring it back. And that's pretty much the only values I really change in the sky atmosphere. Uh, most of the other stuff doesn't really seem to do a whole heck of a lot, so. But yeah. Uh, the volumetric cloud will come up so we can kind of see that in practice here. There we go. And this, these are pretty much going to be your cloud settings. So the layer uh, bottom altitude, if you adjust this, it's obviously how close the, uh, the clouds are to the ground. And then the layer height, that's going to be how like thick or tall the clouds uh, are whether they're like cumulus clouds or they're or like nimbus clouds or I forget the third cloud type the, uh, the one that's real skinny and uh, stratus stratus clouds I think you can change that there uh, the tracing start max distance and um, the start and max distance are basically going to be how far you can see um, although I don't know if I can demo it let me see here uh, yeah, you can kind of see it right around this area if you're looking. I think it's only going to be appropriate if you're in like an open world or how much draw distance do you want to, to spend um, making the clouds. I imagine the higher the value, the more expensive it's going to be for your scene to run. As the lower the value, that seems to get washed out. I'd have to do some frame rendering to actually confirm that, but I would guess that's a pretty safe assumption to make. Uh, and then the max distance is kind of just the whole clouds in general. But really, you don't really see much until you go like near zero, so. Yeah. And then a lot of uh, lighting your scene is just kind of like messing with, uh, you know, all those settings, so. Um, pretty much decide kind of how you want it. Uh, I love the volumetric fog. I think that can really make a scene more uh, more dynamic, make it pop. Um, but then also playing around with your you know like your intensity levels, uh, the color that you want your your um, your skies and stuff to be. That can make a huge difference on the mood of a scene as well.
and then just the overall general placement of your directional light you know, wherever you're doing it I can uh, definitely give a different vibe for your projects depending on what you're going for all right everyone uh, we'll cut it here to keep it short but I hope you found informative value in this topic that you can take into your own projects but as always thanks for watching consider subscribing and see you on the next one.